Welcome to our latest in the in the CE e-learning series. Uh, my name is Mike Curon. Today we're going to talk about building flow domains with ANSYS Design Modeler. A quick administrative note, um, we do offer one PE credit for those of you in New York and New Jersey. Uh, to qualify for that, uh, we require that you participate in all the polls. We'll be doing three of them and then the follow-on survey as well. So just make sure you um, you know, answer those when they come up and um, we'll get in touch with you afterwards about the credits. Okay, so I'll go ahead and share my desktop here and we'll get started. So build flow domains with ANSYS Spine Modeler. We're going to talk about today some, some basics of flow domains, why we need them and, and how to extract them. Uh, why use ANSYS Design Modeler? Most of you are probably using a CAD tool, so why do we want to uh, use or, or learn and use ANSYS Design Modeler to do this? And we'll go over some extraction techniques for flow domains as well as some geometry simplification tools. And I'll be doing some live demos along the way. Uh, this way we can see what we're, uh, how to use each type of operation. Okay, the first steps in any CFD analysis, after we've decided that CFD is what we want to do, that's we have some goal in mind, let's say we want to uh, predict the pressure drop, or maybe we want to uh, find the lift drag over an object. Um, once we identify that CFD can provide us those qualities, we need to determine uh, the extents of the flow domain uh, over we're going to solve the governing equation. So how big of a domain whether it's internal or external, uh, do we need to include in order to get the information that we're looking for? Now, sometimes this requires isolating a section of a larger physical system. For instance, if we had a single valve in an entire piping network, it's generally impractical to solve the uh, entire pi piping network if really only interested in just one tiny section. So we're going to try to isolate uh, that that component that we're interested in. Uh, and solve, uh, you know, solve the the governing equations just in that section. So, with this, that means that we have to cut out this part of an overall larger system, and we want to make sure that we do that wisely. Uh, the the extents of the the uh, domain are going to be where we're placing our boundary conditions. Uh, so we want to make sure we have uh, um, information at the places where we cut the boundaries. So we want to uh, try to choose uh, the extents of our domain based on the information that we know we have. So do we have a flow rate somewhere? Do we have a pressure? Maybe we have a velocity profile. Try to use that information to guide uh, how you uh, uh, determine how large your, your computational domain is going to be. We've identified uh, the overall shape and extents of the domain. We have to extract and then extract it. Now, before we do that, we, or, or before we discuss how we go about doing that, uh, uh, an important note is to understand that we can divide flow domains into two basic categories. We have internal flow domains, so flow through pipes or pumps or, or anything else where the flow is bounded on all sides by walls. Then we also have external flow domains where we have flow around an object, like a building or an aircraft or the hull of a ship. Uh, it's not necessarily bounded on all sides by walls walls, but maybe it's over an object or something. Now, we have a combination of the two, but it's important to make this distinction so that we know which tools within ANSYS Design Modeler we're going to use in order to our, our flow domain. So our next point, why are we going to use ANSYS Design Modeler? Typically, uh, when, we, when we have a, a, a C analysis in mind, we're going to start with a, an existing CAD part. Maybe you made it in your CAD program or, or someone in your organization did. Um, and you, you probably think, why, if I already have this CAD tool and I already have the CAD part, why would I want to go ahead and use, use ANSYS Design Modeler? Well, a couple of different reasons. First, uh, ANSYS Design Modeler has CAD import tools, which allows us to go combine uh, parts from different CAD programs. So ANSYS is what we call CAD neutral. They have no preference to any one CAD vendor. If you are working on a part, maybe you have... A, a CAD part from um, a supplier, uh, and maybe you have a CAD part from your own organization, and maybe they come from different CAD programs. So you can easily combine those in ANSYS Design Modeler into one database. And it, ANSYS Design Modeler allows us to make changes to those uh, to that geometry without affecting the original CAD file. So we can do things like geometry simplification, 
where maybe we want to get rid of some detail that's not really necessary for analysis, and change the CAD, uh, uh, the, the geometry inside the ANSYS Design Modeler without affecting the CAD file that's required maybe for production uh, purposes. And for streamlined and simple flow domain creation tools. So this process or ANSYS Design Modeler is uniquely designed for uh, preparing your geometry for analysis. So we've created tools inside of ANSYS Design Modeler to uh, make extracting flow domains a very simple and straightforward process. See that as we go on. First topic is geometry simplification. Most, most important tools or the most used uh, uh, operations uh, that I uh, take advantage of um, in my day-to-day -day analysis work is the face delete. Uh, from the tools menu, we can, we can insert a face delete, and we use this to simplify uh, existing parts and removing unnecessary features. The picture below, we have an electronics board, and maybe we're solving for the airflow over it, a conjugate heat transfer analysis. And part of that, we have screws connecting um, the multiple boards. Now, if we're airflow, it's pretty clear that the, the tail on the head of the screw is really going to affect affect the flow in such a manner that we need to resolve it. And in addition, resolving those details are going to be very cumbersome in any measure. Right? We're going to have a, a large number of cells inside of those, uh, inside of those details, and, and it's going to be uh, you know, really unnecessary in the grand scheme of things. So by using the face delete, what we do is we can get rid of that topology. So uh, ANSYS Design Modeler will use the surrounding topology and try to delete the feature by paving over it. What the, what's nice about this is it's not subject to the parent-child feature relationships uh, from CAD. Uh, these are not necessarily being translated back to your CAD file. Uh, so this is just for uh, analysis pre-processing. So a useful tool, and I'll show you an example of, of something like that, uh, is going to become a, uh, you know, a key to doing uh, successful CFD analysis. What we use is the merge operation. Now, the merge operation... Um, is available for uh, cows when we have more detail than is really necessary for analysis. So, for instance, if we look at the pictures uh, on the bottom of the slide, we have an edge highlighted that is split into six sections. Now, for meshing purposes, if it's split up that many sections, we're going to have to resolve with a few elements each one of those sections. So it makes meshing more cumbersome. Use merge operation, we can simplify that into just one edge. And everything goes for uh, the faces of the fuselage we see a lower picture. So we, we can simplify the topology uh, definition, uh, not lose any of the detail. Additionally, one of the nice parts about the merge operation is we can use an automated search feature. So we can automatically have design mod modeler go out and search for um, or, or edges that it deems appropriate for merging. And then you can review and have it go ahead and generate. Another tool that we have is the repair tool menu. Uh, the repair tool menu gives options to fix small edges, small faces, uh, spikes in your model, really do some very general automated cleanup. And this is a very, very powerful uh, uh, set of tools here. It will go out and search your, your, your geometry. I try to uh, identify areas in which uh, later on you're going to have difficulty meshing. So I suggest that everybody go ahead and try to use these as much as possible. They, they will help alleviate many a meshing headache. I know this certainly helped me in the past uh, very much. Uh, and you can see where, we, where we've gone from the fuselage up top uh, to a very uh, complicated definition to a much simpler definition on the bottom. So automated search tools uh, that can help us uh, simplify our geometry. Okay, what I want to do is we're going to take our first break and we are going to uh, do a poll. So let that set up here and open it up. Um, again, we, we want to have you participate in these for the the PE credits. So we'll open that one up here and we'll take about a minute and hopefully get everybody's responses on how much time you guys are spending uh, cleaning up geometry.
we're getting our last people to participate there. Okay, well, everybody's giving us some back here. We certainly appreciate that. Let me make sure I see these. And I'm like, uh, just reviewing the results here that we have most people spending, you know, a fair amount of time doing CAD, uh, CAD cleanup. I mean, that's that's typical of analysis. Um, that's that's how things go. You you have a uh, you know a job you're given, and you need to prepare that for analysis. So these tools become very important. Okay, go back to our PowerPoint here. And so what are geometry simplification? Again, it's I, I think it's easier to do that um, before we go ahead and extract our flow domain because I think it's easier to operate on the solid CAD geometry rather than uh, the the flow domain itself. So I try to do that before I do any uh, uh, extraction. Uh, so once we when we've done that sufficiently, uh, and it's it's usually not going to be a one-time process. We may have to go back and forth, uh, but and we've done it to to where we think we're we're good enough to extract the flow domain. We can go ahead and do that uh, using one of two different tools. Now, the first we're going to use for internal flow domains, and that's the fill operation. What the operation does is create a, a frozen body from the internal void in your CAD part. Two ways of defining this, so a little bit of flexibility. The first is what we call bicavity, and this requires picking all of the faces that define the internal void. So if we look at the picture below, we have a manifold here where there's maybe three faces on the inside, and we have all of those. And once we generate the operation, on the right, you can see the resulting flow domain uh, that captures those internal voids. Now, conversely, if the internal uh, structure is, is too complicated to pick all of the, all the faces, what we do do uh, instead is use the bicaps method. And what this requires is that we create surface body that will cap the openings uh, of the of the void, uh, and we'll show you that in, in our demo, uh, which we're going to get to right now. So let me drag uh, in Workbench a uh, geometry uh, component into the project page and open that up. And let me drag that over into this screen here. And I'll an import an external geometry file. So the first thing we're going to do is a, a ball valve assembly. So I'll generate that. And you can see what we have here is a uh, ball valve section. And alongside that, we have some piping uh, that's attached. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and extract this internal flow domain. So let me pipe here, and we can see um, we have some complicated structure on the inside. Um, of the ball valve section. Uh, if we look at the piping section, we have a relatively simple uh, internal uh, domain. If you look at this pipe first, you can see we just have one face that defines the cavity, and so it should be pretty simple to extract this using the fill operation. So if I go to the tools menu and fill, I don't change anything. My extraction type is going to be by cavity. I just go ahead and select that uh, internal face, press apply. And generate, and now you can see uh, very, very simply, I hide the pipe body. I get exactly what the flow domain looks like on the inside. A very easy process. Again, this is very obviously simple uh, internal flow uh, uh, flow geometry or internal void geometry, um, but it captures exactly what I need. Now, instead, if I look at the um, the uh, uh, ball part. And I look at the inside, well, now I have quite a much more complex uh, internal geometry. Maybe one of the first things I want to do is get to this lower fillet here. So if I uh, select this uh, one face here and I go to flood the blends, I will just capture uh, that lower fillet there. So I'm going to unselect a few faces here. And I want to, I want to try to get rid of that. So I'm going to try to use a face delete. Uh, to, to minimize the detail there, at, at least in some some way. So I these faces, I go to the Create menu, and I select Face Delete, and generate that. Get rid of the, 
those fillets. So basically, he tries to take the surrounding geometry and use that to remove uh, uh, the extra detail that I don't want for this purpose. Once I'm uh, done uh, doing my defeaturing, we'll go back and try to uh, extract the flow domain from this section. If the, uh, the fill operation, and I use the bicavity method, it's going to be tough for me to pick all these faces on the inside. So I have two options. If I relatively simple external geometry, so outside of my ball valve, what I can do is just go ahead and select all of the faces and unselect the faces on the outside. Now, for this part, I have still a rather complicated outside as well. You see I have a number of these faces here that I'd have to go ahead and unselect. So that's not really a practical solution. Instead, what I'm going to do is use uh, the by caps method. It's going to require is that a a capping body on the opening here and this opening here, right? That, divine, that defines the opening to my internal void. Select the two edges that define the opening. I come up here to the concept menu. Very easily create surfaces from those edges, right? That's one of my options here. So if I uh, select that, insert into the outline tree, and just what you can see is I get two surface bodies. And you see it's been treated uh, just the same. The cap off the ends of my, my ball valve structure. Very simple, very easy to do. If I go to my fill operation now, I'm going to change the extraction type to by caps and target just the stid bodies, just the one I've uh, selected right here. Now, the field is preserved capping bodies. That basically dictates whether I'm going to keep those surface bodies I created. Generally speaking, you're not going to need those, so I'm going to leave that as no. But maybe you want to preserve uh, the solids, which represent uh, the ball valve itself. So I'll go ahead and generate that. And I hide everything except for the geometry. What you can see is get, um, you know, the complicated internal structure gets extracted in a very easy way matter. I have exactly what I'm looking for um, in, in just a few short clicks. I mean, uh, that took me all of two minutes maybe to do, and I'm sure if I wasn't on the phone, I'd be uh, be able to do it a, a little bit quicker. Okay. So I talked about internal uh, flow domains. Let's do our next poll here. So I'll open that up. And get a little feedback here on which which tool you're using currently to do your flow domain extraction. So let me open that poll up and we'll take a minute and get your feedback. Okay, like we got a few people still finishing up. Everybody's uh, submitted their answers there. Let me close this and save it. And it looks like we have a few people using uh, ANSYS Design Modeler, but some people also still using their CAD program. So hopefully it can show you the utility of ANSYS Design Modeler and, and why you'd want to be using that instead. Okay. Back to our PowerPoint here. And the next topic we're going to discuss is external flow domains. So external flow domains, we have a, a little bit of a different um, uh, concerns. Uh, typically, our, our concern here, rather than cutting it at a, a specific location in a larger physical system, uh, like a piping network, is we want to make sure our domain is large enough so that the gradients at the boundary of our solution fields uh, aren't, aren't too big. We have a, a uh, solution or a, a problem like we have here where we have a wind turbine um, and we have air coming from uh, left to the right and flowing in one dominant direction. I like to use this useful rule of thumb where we have, um, you know, a, a, a the uh, dimensions of the object that the air is flowing around, and use that as the basis for the size of my flow domain. So I like to take height and use at least, uh, you know, two two times that 
um, in front of the uh, of of my object and and a little more uh, downstream. And also ample uh, ample space on either side and above uh, the object. Now again, these are just rules of thumb, but usually a pretty good starting spot, uh, some place for for my frame. We can always go and 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 uh, a first cut solution and come back and change them if necessary. Now inside my modeler, we have an operation called the enclosure operation that's ideally suited for doing just this. Now, if we were to do this with, uh, in, a, in a CAD program or, or without the enclosure operation, what we need to do is cre first create a sketch of the shape of our domain, of our, um, our flow domain, extrude that so that we have the three-dimensional volume, and do a Boolean subtract so that we uh, subtract out the CAD part or, or our solid body from the flow domain. The nice thing about the enclosure operation, it does all of those things for you. So all three operations in one, um, we create uh, a flow domain of several different shapes, and also have very detailed control over the size of the enclosure. So we can specify uh, how much, uh, uh, basically, slack from the, the CAD part we want on each side uh, of the part, how much space we want between um, that part and the boundaries. So a very useful feature. I also like to point out that it's useful for internal flow domains as well. Sometimes a complicated uh, internal flow domain where you have multiple parts coming together to form uh, uh, the boundary of the internal flow domain. If those don't fit exactly together, it can be difficult to form uh, the internal flow domain. So I oftentimes will use uh, the enclosure operation in order to determine where I have leaks in my solid body. So where those bodies aren't coming together and touching each other uh, exactly as they should be. Uh, just another, you know, a quick uh, note on the use of the enclosure operation. Okay, let's come back and do our last poll. And once we come back from the poll, we will do our final, uh, final exercise or final demonstration of the enclosure operation and we'll um, uh, wrap things up for this e-learning session. So I'm going to set up and just get an idea of where you guys are facing your biggest challenges uh, in, in preparing geometry for CFD. Okay, the last person is wrapping up. And that should do it. So it looks like we're much split between CAD cleanup and geometry simplification, with a few, few people saying domain extraction is cumbersome as well. And hopefully the tool that we've showed you today will, will help you and you'll be able to explore with, uh, you know, using those, uh, um, you know, more successfully. Okay, so take a look at uh, extracting an external flow domain. So come bench, I'll insert a new design modeler uh, component system and we'll open that up. And I'm going to go ahead and import a parallel of a fuselage wing uh, a fuselage and wing section. So let's generate that. So this looks pretty clean um, as far as the, the geometry definition, uh, but I want to try to clean up some of these faces first. So before I go ahead and extract my flow domain, I'm going to do a little uh, geometry simplification. And in this case, I'm going to use the merge operation. Tools menu, uh, merge. I'm going to change my merge type from edges to faces. And automatic search tool. I want Design Modeler to go out and search for um, clusters that it thinks are, are, are suitable for merging. So go, go ahead and just find clusters now from no to yes. I can see select like 17 different clusters uh, as, as, as you know, potentially uh, mer you know, being merged. And if I could look, maybe they're on the inside here and on the top of the wing where I have four faces that maybe I can merge into one. So let me go and generate that. And hopefully when, 
when it's uh, generating, as it goes through each cluster and tries to merge, it will come back successfully and have them merge together. And we'll have a simpler uh, a definition of our geometry uh, and make, make, make our when we get to the mesher a lot easier. And so, we did. so we, what we have now, if we look, for instance, at the top of the uh, wing section, oops, zoomed in a little too close there, what you see, zoom in on the top of the wing section, it cons and consolidated those four surfaces into one. I made a much cleaner definition, um, uh, additionally, in on the inside um, of our, our, our engine here. Uh, so it looks, it looks a lot nicer. Again, this is um, you know, a nice automated tool for cleaning up your geometry. So I, I do a sufficient level of cleaning it up, come back to the Tools menu, and I select Enclosure. And the first I have to select for the enclosure is what shape I want it to be. Now, the option of using a user-defined shape uh, or a sphere or a cylinder. Uh, but in this case, what I want to use is the box. So I'll use just a rectangular shape. Uh, use that to define my uh, uh, flow domain. Now, to specify uh, what, what the enclosure operation requires is that we spe specify uh, the cushion on each side. So in each direction, we want to know uh, how much space we want between uh, the fuselage and wing section and the boundary of our enclosure. Then two ways. We can say, I just want a uniform uh, uh, set uh, cushion in all directions, and it, it will go ahead and enforce that. But for a case like this, a non-uniform uh, uh, cushion is usually a little more, more useful. So X direction, I probably want a, a larger cushion in the downstream or in the wake region than I do in the upstream. If I look at the negative X direction, I can set that to be, let's say, meters. But X or downstream, I want to set that to a larger value. So I'll set it to 120, for instance, just to start with. Um, I can always come back and change, change these. Now, um, uh, in the in the Y direction on either side of the wing, I want to do, let's say, maybe uh, uh, meters on either side. And we'll do, just for starters, we'll do 30 meters uh, in the plus or minus Z direction. So once I find these uh, constraints, I go ahead and generate. And frozen body transparency back on. At the plane, see, I very simply and very quickly was able to specify the the extents of the flow domain. Design my perform the Boolean operation for me, made it simple, um, and gave me ample spacing on on side of my my um, uh, of my fuselage and, and wing section. So a very uh, you know simple, straightforward um, uh, operation. And all there is to it. So, I think, you know, we've kind of covered, uh, um, you know, how we do this in ANSYS Design Model. Hopefully, we've showed you a couple of things that you could go back and, uh, and use on your own. Um, uh, a few points to, to remember. Um, ANSYS Design Modeler allows you to do these uh, geometry simplification tools on uh, CAD part that you import without affecting the original CAD file. Um, it also allows you to easily and, 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 and in a streamlined fashion extra, extra, uh, extract uh, any um, um, uh, type of uh, flow domain that you're looking to extract, whether that's uh, an internal flow domain for which we're use, going to use the filtration or external flow domain for which we're going to use the enclosure operation. So hopefully we'll do a couple of things here, and thank you for uh, taking your time to attend uh, today's e-learning session. Um, and if any questions, um, you can always follow up with us. Uh, we should be posting this webex to our website, so certainly check back for that in, in the future. Okay, thank you.